Welcome to Beer O'Clock at the Boat Shed, where one of our aims is to show you some beautiful wooden boats being built or restored. So this session I'm calling in on Simon Sadubin's Sydney Wooden Boats at Mona Vale. Simon has been restoring boats in Sydney for a while now and has done some of the best restorations around, including several six metre yachts, several of the Ranger class like the one I'm building, one of which he used to own, and quite a few motor launches. Almost 20 years ago, Simon and I worked together for a while in a loose partnership, so I occasionally drop in at the boat shed around beer o'clock on a Friday. Do it again. Yeah. Cheers. 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 <laughs> the boat Simon's been restoring for a few months now is Caress, a 30-foot sloop designed by Wally Ward and built by Keith Newland in 1961. Caress was a predecessor of the famous Carmen class, about which more later. It's owned by a syndicate of dedicated racing men who really appreciate what they've got and are doing us all a favour by getting Simon to restore it to such a magnificent standard. Caress um, is a precursor to the Carmens, and she was designed by Wally Ward. In fact, her sister boat, Chimera, was the first of the two. And I think Chimera was built maybe eight years before this one. Um, so Wally Ward designed a number of double enders, um, starting with his own boat, Janaway, which he called, his design was RD1. And then he did a second incarnation, RD2 which he lengthened slightly, and there's a number of boats built off that plan. And then um, Chimera and Caress are the third iteration, so they're RD3s. Um, and they've been lengthened again to 30 odd feet, 30 feet. Um, they're the classic raised deck, double-ended canoe stern um, sloop with a fractional rig, and they were designed as harbour sailors, harbour racers and they sailed really well. They sailed a lot with Middle Harbour, I think, and um, Ron Swanson noticed these boats sailing and noticed how well they did in handicap racing. And I think he looked at it and thought, gee, if you got one of those and you just modified it a little bit, just optimised it a bit for ocean racing, it would rate really well, like it'd be pretty untouchable. So he talked to Wally Ward and he said to Wally, why don't you redesign it, we'll stretch it um, stretch it a little bit. I think there was a minimum waterline length for RORC. Yeah. It may have been 30 feet waterline or 30, maybe the 31 feet on deck, 30 foot waterline. Um, so they re redesigned um, the Chimera and um, Caress and those two are, their names start with CA and they're the first one in the series uh, and the Ward family called them the CAs. So that's really where that all came from. So they redesigned it into an ocean racer and that one was built by Swanson, Ron Swanson, and it was called uh, Carmen, which was a pretty famous little boat um, and spawned a whole generation of ocean, ocean racers. Now, they did optimise that design. So what they ended up doing was they cut away the forefoot. It's very similar to Chimera and Caress, but they cut away the forefoot they stretched the design and they gave it a masthead rig. And that's really important because these boats had fractional rigs um, with runners, it wasn't a real ocean going rig. And they made it a huskier rig so they could really stand up in you know, heavy weather and just keep going. And that's what really gave them their, their offshore capability. Uh, and yeah, they just proved themselves to be brilliant sea boats. Um, and then they did a final version, a Mark II Carmen where they lengthened it again cut it away a little bit more and gave it a little bit more bilge. So they just just sweetened up the design all the way around, optimised it as much as they could. Um, and they probably did some sail 
um, area changes, so they got the most out of the rule. And then the Mark II Carmens um, just took everything before them. So there was uh, Cadence, which was Jimmy Mason's boat, and that won the Hobart. And then a whole heap of Australian adventurers built these boats because they were inexpensive in their day and very sea seaworthy. And they sailed them all around the world. So there was Carronade, which sailed around Cape Horn, got rolled, got back up again, kept going. They went everywhere. You know, there was a whole heap of them. There's Caroma, there's Cardinal Puff, there, you know. So, yeah, the, the, the voyages they did was absolutely amazing. Yeah, you know, that's probably as good as any. So, I mean, obviously she was stripped completely inside and out, back to bare wood uh, in sections. Uh, and as far as structural reframing goes, all of the frames were sound. However, right down in the heel here, um, on this sharp turn, uh, the inside fibres of the frames were just starting to open a little bit. They're just starting to have in, in a line, um, just starting to open up because it's the reverse turn. So what we did is we cleaned off the surface of all these frames and we, we punched the original nails out, which were clenched. So we, we nipped them off and then punched them um, from the outside in and cleaned the frame off, laminated over that with um, flooded gum. So these little flooded gum frame ends uh, and they taper off. They just taper off into the flat above uh, with a little round so there's no hard spots. And then we re-nailed down through the heel and we rove this section because we just, because they're laminated, we thought it would be better to rove them. If they weren't laminated, if they're just sawn, we would have just um, clenched them and it would have been cleaner like the rest of the frames. But lamination yeah. be more likely to split when you, when yeah. you clench it in. Yep. Yeah. So that just goes all the way through the heel and all the nails were in excellent condition. Like they were, this boat had not suffered at all from any leaking. All the seams were really good. Yep. It was amazing actually. So. That was a saving grace that we didn't have to refasten the whole thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got white beach on all the sole boards. Yeah, well, the, the planking is white beach. Yep. So we like to reflect the sole, whatever the hull's planked in, but often we'll, you know, if it's a cowrie hull, yep. we'll use cowrie sole boards, and this is beach. Yeah. And silky oak on all the, on the trim. Yeah, well, 61, this boat had all silky um, trims, and... So we use that as the feature timber. The draw front is original, and the bin lid, so they're original drawers that were reused, recycled. I called in again a few weeks later, just prior to the boat being launched. By the time you see this, she'll be racing hard again on Sydney Harbour. A great result for the owners, the restorers, Simon Sadubin and his team at Sydney Wooden Boats, and for Australia's maritime heritage. Check out Simon's website www.sydneywoodenboats.com.au and his Instagram account Sydney Wooden Boats. Thanks for watching and see you for another session of Beer O'Clock at the Boat Shed Cheers. soon. Cheers. 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 <laughs> and that one was built by Swanson, Ron Swanson, and it was called. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Dig <Dig-a-dum-dum. laughs>